Like, I need me a blue barbarian if it means that I'm going to be treated like an utter queen. Like, I will take one. Peter Georgina. Georgina. What? Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my October wrap-up, a part two for 2022. I read a total of 14 books this month. I've already talked about my first seven over in part one, so if you're interested, go check that video out. And these are the final seven books that I read, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about is Blood and Moonlight by Erin Beattie. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Katrin, who is a young orphan girl girl who becomes tangled up in a serial killer's murder investigation while trying to hide secrets of her own. First off, can we just take in how gorgeous this cover is? I knew that I needed this book in my life just because of how pretty it is. I enjoyed this for the most part, but I did feel like it dragged a little bit in the middle. I liked Katrin, or Kat, as the main character. She was really fun to get to know, and I loved learning more about her moon magic and her background. I will say that I was much more intrigued and invested in Simon and Julianne as characters, though, and I also wasn't exactly on board with Simon and Katrin's romance in the end. I am personally a big fan of serial killers, so I really loved trying to figure out who the serial killer was in this, and I also really liked how it wasn't super obvious right from the beginning of the book. I really liked the profiling that Simon, Julian, and Kat did throughout the book trying to find this killer, and I really liked the discussions of mental illness in this, and how well that these topics were handled. Overall, I thought it was really fun trying to figure out who the killer was, but like I said, dragged a little bit in the middle, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Reputation by Sarah Vaughn. This is another one that I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows aspiring politician Emma Webster, who has pretty much sacrificed everything for her career. When her 14-year-old daughter makes a mistake that may jeopardize her entire future, Emma will stop at Nothing in order to protect her. But then a body is found in Emma's home and she is put on trial for murder and so she needs to keep her reputation intact and it's like the story of that. I really like the discussions that took place in this book. There's a lot about social media, the misuse of social media, misogyny, the hatred towards women in a professional setting or just women in general. There's conversations about revenge porn and especially the overall message of how fragile a person's reputation can be. I thought it was very well done. I really liked the multiple point of views that we got in this and I thought that the use of Twitter and news articles were really well done and definitely impacted the overall story. I don't think that this was necessarily a thriller like it was marketed. I think it was more of a courtroom drama. I thought that the pacing was really well done at the beginning, but it definitely petered out in the end and I became a little bit bored with it. I also don't think that Emma was the most likable character. I didn't really give a shit about what happened to her and I feel like in these kind of books, you really do need to care for the character in order to fully enjoy it. So overall, I think it was just an okay read. I think that the discussions that were taking place were very well done, but an unlikable character and a little bit weird pacing was not exactly for me, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have a graphic novel that I absolutely fell in love with. It is Bell of the Ball by Mary Costa, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. It was so stinking cute. This falls head cheerleader Regina, who takes my matters into her own hands when her star athlete girlfriend is failing her English class. Gina decides to enlist the help of the very nerdy school mascot, Belle Hawkins, who just so happens to be in love with her. As Chloe and Hawkins spend more time together, they quickly realize that they actually knew each other in kindergarten, and they begin to reminisce on sweeter times. This like I said, was so stinking cute. I could not put it down. I read it in one sitting because I just uh, love these cinnamon roll characters. Chloe and Belle were both really great. I loved watching them together, but I think that they grew so much, not only together, but apart as well. I think that the overall message of self-acceptance and 
doing what makes you happy was really well done. I also just think that the art style and the all pink palette just fit the vibes of this so well, so I highly, highly recommend this if you have not read it yet. Five out of five stars, like, female version of Heartstopper. Like, so, so cute. Next up, I have finally read The Infamous Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. So many people on booktube have been telling me I need to read this. I finally did it and I ended up actually really enjoying it. I was very skeptical but I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. So if you live under a rock and don't know what this is about, it is about a girl named Georgina or Georgie who wakes up on a spaceship after being kidnapped by some space aliens. She is surrounded by other women who are also kidnapped but then the ship ends up crashing and and they get stranded on this ice planet filled with very scary things. Georgie is deemed the leader of this group of women and she is sent into the ice lands in order to find help and she ends up running into a big blue broody barbarian that she cannot communicate with named Vectol and it goes from there. This book was a lot of fun and I found it very entertaining. The only reason I'm only giving it four stars instead of five is because it became very repetitive very quickly. I also think that it was just very similar to Avatar, which I don't know if it was like Avatar fan fiction and then became this, but I mean, I'll take it. I thought that the world building was really well done. I liked learning more about the key or Kwai. I'm not really sure how to say that, but I thought it was very interesting what it meant to the aliens. I also very much liked that even though Vectal resonated with Georgie and he was like, you're my mate, you're my soulmate, like we have to be together, it was still ultimately Georgie's decision whether or not that happened and Vectal never really pressured her into making a decision. I think that the sex scenes were really great, I had a lot of fun reading them, I loved how much Vectal doted on Georgie, like I need me a blue barbarian if it means that I'm going to be treated like an utter queen like I will take one. I had a lot of fun. I definitely think that I'm going to continue on with this series even though there's like 20 of them. I don't actually know how many there are but there's a lot but eventually I'm going to get to them but like I said lots of fun. Four out of five stars. Next up I have My Best Friend's Sister by QB Tyler. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars as well. This follows Jackson Walsh who is a very successful young businessman in New York City. He has no problem picking up women. His problem is that he is very busy and so he just doesn't have the time to care about them afterwards. When his best friend asks him to keep an eye on his younger sister who just moved to New York City in order to go to law school, he is less than enthused. As months go by, he does not see Ava until one night where he gets a phone call and Ava's in a very sketchy area of the neighborhood and so he decides that he's going to go pick her up because it's very late at night. He does not expect to fall madly in love with her and it, it just progresses from there. This was a very quick novella. I had a lot of fun reading it. It features one of my favorite tropes, which is like best friends, brother, or sister. I don't know why I love that trope so much, but I eat it up every time. I really liked Ava's character. She was such a sweetheart, but she did not take shit from anybody, which I really liked, especially Jackson. Jackson rubbed me the wrong way for a very long portion of this novella, which it's a novella, so that it, it's very short. It was a very short time and I did not like him for the majority of it until he started to care for Ava and then he turned into this little sweet cinnamon angel baby. I personally think that his character development was a little bit too quick but it is a novella so I get it. It had to happen and I did like him in the end but beginning Jackson was just too pompous and self-centered for me. I was not a fan. I did like the two of them together though. I think that they did have very good chemistry and I really loved the banter that they had with one another. I'm definitely intrigued to see if there's another book featuring these two because like I said I did like them together. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. And Next up is The Boy by Rain Havoc. I will let you guys know uh, the month of November. Uh, it is currently November 7th and I have read almost all of Rain Havoc's back list now in the month of November, so be prepared for a lot of her reviews on 
the next wrap up. But this is The Boy by Rain Havoc. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. It is an extreme horror novella, so if you are going to pick up Rain Havoc, keep that in mind. I would recommend her. She is a lot of fun, but definitely keep in mind it is extreme horror. So this one follows Chop, who has very extreme violent urges, and he usually is able to keep them at bay, but one night after a night out with friends, he decides to act on these urges, and he lets himself into a family home that is hosting a dinner party. While he is unleashing his inner monster, he he realizes that there is an unexpected companion, partner in crime, if you will, in the house. And it kind of progresses from there. So, it was a lot. I didn't exactly know what to expect from this because it was the first Rain Havoc book that I picked up. I now know what to expect from this author, but let me tell you, for a novella, this author knows how to pack a punch. <laughs> the story is very quick, yet very violent, very gory. There is a huge trigger warning for rape. Be aware of that if you're going to pick up Rain Havoc. Rape is usually involved. Chop was a freaking psychopath. Like, he is terrifying, and the fact that he would stumble along someone who shares the same tendencies as him was also frightening. Like I said, this was my first Rain Havoc work, so I didn't know what to expect, but I did hear that she was very good at what she does, which I definitely agree, and it's kind of fucked up of me, but like, I kind of wish that there was a sequel to this to see where Chop and his companion ends up, which is so fucked, but like, it was such an entertaining read, but like, Chop is terrifying, and his little friend, also terrifying, but I gave it 4 out of 5 stars, but like I said, be aware what you're getting into with Rain Havoc, because it's a lot. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for the month of October of 2022 is The Sunbearer Trials by Aiden Thomas. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So every decade, 10 semi-dioceses are chosen by Seoul to compete in a five challenge battle in order to become the next sun bearer. The loser of these challenges is sacrificed to soul in order to charge the sunstone in order to keep the obsidian gods at bay. 17 year old Teo is chosen this round and he is also chosen with his best friend Nia. A young jade is also chosen named Zio and the three of them team up in order to keep each other out of the bottom rankings and it's like the story of that. The first thing I want to call to attention in this book is the diversity. It is so well done. There are so many identities and genders and sexualities represented in this book in a way that normalizes it, which I really loved. I think that the world building was really well done in this. I felt that you got the information slowly instead of info dumping and it was done in a way that you never really felt overwhelmed with everything that was coming at you. I think that the challenges were very exciting and I really liked how none of them were repetitive. They all were very unique in their own way and I loved seeing how the semi-dioses rose to each occasion. I don't think I disliked any of the characters. Each of them had a lot of character development and I loved how each of their arcs developed throughout the story. The ending threw me for a loop. I did not see that coming and I am definitely intrigued to see where the story goes from here, but I do think that it did drag a little bit in the middle. There were some scenes that I just felt didn't really need to be there and didn't really bring anything to the story. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed it, but it did feel like it was dragging a little bit, so I'll take that as you will. All right, everybody, so those were the last seven books that I read for the month of October 2022. If you are interested in the first seven books that I read, then I will leave the link to that wrap up down below and you can check it out. Let me know down below what you read this month and what you thought of them, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!